You are listening to Exploring Sacred with your host, Denise Iwana Francisco, on the Temple Within Radio and Digital Media Network, giving voice to the sacred. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a gorgeous Wednesday morning. Here it is in the United States, the day before Thanksgiving. So for some people, it's a very hectic day. And for others, it's a day to really begin to wind down and uh, anticipate perhaps time with family members tomorrow, which is Thanksgiving here in the States, or to maybe spend some time alone regrouping. But in any case, it's grown to be here in the United States a time where we begin to think about and hopefully prepare for what are known as the holy days, the holidays. And that is the impetus for today's show today. The way of the hermit, silence and wisdom. And with that, welcome everybody to the show. And for those of you that are entering into the chat room, thank you for being here. I'm going to take just a moment to post the chat room on the uh, group page. So please bear with me. Hey, Lady Hawk. Welcome to the chat room this morning. It's good to have you with me, with all of us. And, uh, (laughs) oh goodness, always makes me smile. Good stuff. Okay, here we are, exploring sacred. And as we're posting this and gathering everybody together, take a moment to spend perhaps the for the first time today a moment just uh, breathing breathing into our body bringing ourselves into our body and being present with our body it's amazing what happens when we spend enough time with our body letting it know that it's nourished that it's valued that it's loved and how the body responds to that because our body is so intelligent it is so wise there we are okay very good all right back to the show we go coming into the chat room is very easy and it's kind of nice to cozy up together and be present with one another the way of the hermit The soul's need for silence, and in that silence, the gathering of wisdom. On the medicine wheel, we are heading very shortly, in about four weeks, into the direction of the north, which for me on the medicine wheel, the Chongleshka is the color red. It's the direction of going within, finding safe harbor, being with our dreams, being with our crystal visions being with what has been, what currently is, and where we are going forward as the cycle, as the wheel, as the hoop, as the weave continues to grow, it continues to move, it has an intelligence. Our life, our soul's journey does have an intelligence, I believe. One that we don't always recognize in our humanness because it seems as though part of Being human, at least here in the West, is being busy. Filling every single moment of every single hour of every single day with something. And, you know, speaking for myself, having been a single mom for many years, right? Having a house full of young people to take care of, paying the bills, making sure they have what they need, I know exactly what it is like to be busy and to have to be busy, quite frankly, to to take care of those needs, to make sure that life has the essentials, it has those basic needs fulfilled. And yet I can say, even though there were times in my life where I would fall into bed absolutely exhausted at night, 
taking care of what needed to be taken care of in the busyness of being a single mom, of being a parent. There were at least four or five, maybe 10 minutes a day where I made room for the silence, to be quiet. And perhaps sometime during the weekend, I might expand that to a half hour. And if I was really going to go the length of anything for an entire hour, just to be alone in the silence. The place of silence is something that we remember as children. Some people in the silence had what some people may call invisible playmates, right? Those hidden friends, at least hidden from those that couldn't see them perhaps adult eyes who had forgotten what exists in the silence. But as children, when we're not encumbered by electronic devices that seem to be attached to them anymore, we get to enjoy the wisdom of our soul in the silence and the wisdom and the life of the unseen realms. You know, just because we're too busy to see them doesn't mean that the unseen world doesn't exist. In fact, the unseen world does exist. And sometimes the more busy we try to be or the busier that we are, the unseen realm will reach out more forcibly, trying to get our attention. But as children, being in, a, in the silence, it is so good for kids to have quiet time to have silent time, or if there has to be noise and clatter, for the noise and the clatter to be soothing, to be soft, to be nourishing to the soul, nourishing to the imagination. The imagination is a wonderful gift that our soul is part and parcel of. Our imagination, I believe, works best in the quiet, in the solitude. It's through the force field it's through the, the weave of the imagination, I believe, that spirit speaks to us, that the hidden realms, the soul realms speak to us most vividly through what I call our clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgustians, clairsmesians, clairsentience, clairvoyance. All of the clairs are enhanced by silence. And yet, even in the pregnant pauses, sometimes we can get jittery, can't we? In that pregnant pause that I just that I just took, I'm certain somebody thought to themselves, oh my God, where did she go? Where did she go? What's happening? It's quiet. It's silent. Oftentimes, if I am asked to describe myself, one of the things that I will first say about myself is that I am an introvert. Because by virtue of who I am, I am most definitely an introvert. I like quiet time. I like solitude. And every so often, that little sliver of my horoscopical tapestry, known as Leo, will draw to me people and noise and chatter and gatherings and all of those wonderful, joyful occasions. And when that sliver of Leo is full... The rest of me, that quadruple Scorpio-ness of my being, says it's time to withdraw. It's time to go within again, Dana. It's necessary for my soul to have quiet. I'm married to a Taurus who enjoys television. He loves watching TV. He loves being plugged in almost all the time to something. And so it's been a very interesting journey these past six, almost seven years, coming to a place of balance where he now understands that perhaps the most, the most, what do I want to say? Disdainful thing to my soul is to wake up to a television running. <laughs> For me, waking up to the sound of a television, whether it's in a hotel room or here in my home is absolute torture and torment to my soul. 
it's very rare that the television is even on in the house any longer unless Todd is tucked away downstairs in the family room watching it by himself or in the evening if we're watching the History Channel or Travel Channel or something like that. Right now I'm playing music in my home, but the music that I'm playing is Liz Story. She's a pianist. It's amazing, beautiful, soft, tranquil music. And that doesn't mean that every so often Ozzy Osbourne or Led Zeppelin, or, you know, some of my favorites are cranked up. But when that's done, it's done and it's put away. And the hermit calls out and says, it's time to go quiet again. Good morning, Jennifer Wilson. It's great to have you in here. Oftentimes we find that the children in our lives perhaps need more quiet than we ever expected or suspected that they would need. Some kids need the constant chatter and clatter and busyness of the world, but I believe most children need the silence. They need to figure out the fact that they've come here to the to a human human existence. I mean, imagine for a gifted child in this day and age arriving on the earth plane. From the moment that they are born, they are hooked up to wires, right? Making sure that their vital signs are sound and all of those good sorts of things. And they're oftentimes immediately being talked to, poked and prodded. And not long after that, they're being stimulated by parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles who believe that stimulating the brain right out of the chute is the best way to go. And nowhere along, even in the beginning of some children's lives, is there a place of quiet and silence. And so the anxiety and the stress levels begin for many children, at least here in the West, from the moment that they are born. And then the moment that they can hold an, an electronic device, they can poke a button, they can scroll through screens, they are attached to an electronic device. And again, silence is avoided, perhaps not by their own choice. The soul requires silence, particularly for those souls that are coming, I believe, into the new bodies of advanced, or spiritually gifted children these days. They come from a place of perfect silence. Perfect silence. Those realms where colors speak gently, where the spheres are soft with music, where the silence is full of wisdom of the ages of their own souls many lifetimes. And within nine months time, somewhere within that time frame, some stay a little bit longer in the oven before they're born. They are tossed into absolute chaos of electronics and busyness and sound. Heck, some of us adults feel that way. I feel that way. The soul requires silence because the silence speaks volumes. The silence also contains an energy, an aliveness. What do I want to say about that? An intelligence, that's the word that I'm looking for. It contains an intelligence that helps us to sort through our humanness. <clears throat> and sometimes in the sorting through, that's really where things get scary because by golly, if there's nothing there to occupy your mind, all of a sudden the mind makes a visit down memory lane to visit, to process, to take a look at, to remember, to glean from our experiences. Yeah, Jimmy Page chose the hermit as his image. Yeah, Jimmy Page. Guitarist Led Zeppelin. Right on, Rob. Good morning, Rob. In the silence, 
Yeah, I love that photo of the hermit picking up the sticks, right? Picking up the sticks. Whenever I looked at that, even as a teenager, the hermit picking up the sticks on the cover of that album, I always thought to myself, that hermit is in the silence, and that's his meditation, picking up the sticks. The hermit is in the silence, being out there in nature, picking up the sticks. And to me, as I got older, then those sticks represented wisdom, the wisdom that's gleaned in the silence of walking with nature, right? Putting it in the basket of our knowledge. What's the title of that album, Rob? Would you put that in there so people understand what it is that we're talking about? There are so many nuggets of wisdom that come to us in the silence. And, and again, going back to the imagination, I think one of the best things that humanity ever created was a box of Crayola crayons, right? Not only do they smell awesome, not only do they smell fantastic, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Now they come in boxes of like over more than the 64 box. But even as adults... Opening up that box of Crayola crayons and beginning to draw, beginning to let our imagination bring color to life because we're stimulated by color. But for a child to have a box of crayons that isn't part of an electronic device anymore uh, is a beautiful thing. I give away a lot of boxes of crayons, you know, gathering thunder foundations, getting ready for it to help sponsor the annual Native American Education Program Winter Celebration, a.k.a. a Christmas party, right? We don't call it that in the public school system here. But almost every one of those stockings that are handed out contain a box of crayons or colored pencils to allow the imagination of the youth, of the child who will receive it, to speak through doodling, through coloring and coloring books, right, on pieces of paper, allowing the soul to come through as inspired works. You know, whether you're, you are a parent, a musician, an artist, whatever you happen to be as a human being, spirit is always trying to inspire us. And sometimes, yes, inspiration comes when we're all jacked up on loud music and things like that, but oh, the inspiration that comes to us in the quiet is quite exquisite because it's not being influenced by anything other than our relationship to spirit, divine inspiration, coming down through the pleroma, as some say. Being with our thoughts, being with our memories, can be really heavy duty. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have, you know, the assistance of therapists and healers and all of that, because of course that's all wonderful and we should have someone or some ones in our life to help us process this human life. But in the silence, even as an, as an adult, taking a box of crayons or colored pencils or colored gel pens and just allowing those memories, those situations, those experiences to flow through us, is wonderfully healing in the silence. Because once we put color to it, we put the motion of pen or pencil to it, all of a sudden there's an orchestration of healing. Visiting those places in the silence, perhaps the memory of the, of the season prior, and the experiences of the season prior, what do I mean by that? as we enter into the holy days and we head into the time here in, the, in the, this part of the, the world known as the winter solstice, the return of the light. As the days here get darker, it offers us more opportunity to be quiet and alone with our thoughts, to let our soul speak, to let it process what it has experienced in the spring, in the summer, in the winter past to let go of, just like those autumn leaves that I talked about a couple of months ago, to shake loose the leaves of experiences, people, places, and things that no longer belong on our tree in our life. 
and also to let those acorns and nuggets of growth be planted firmly into the soil. I recently planted about another hundred tulip bulbs here in the enchanted forest. Fall is also for planting. So as we allow the leaves of those experiences that no longer nourish our soul to fall to the ground, taking the time to garner the wisdom, right? As we're shaking loose of our leaves in the autumn, it's important not only to let those leaves fall to the ground, but what does each one of those leaves represent? And which one of those acorns and seeds are we going to allow to grow further to really pick up speed of growth in the winter when we go within? Only to see the new life begin in the spring. Autumn heading into winter at the time of the hermit, the hermit takes a look at all of the experiences and sometimes the most recent experiences bring up experiences from even further past that perhaps were latent, forgotten, or put aside until we were ready to really take a look and remember them. All in the silence, maybe with some hot tea or a hot cup of coffee or a hot toddy, depending on your liking. being alone. And what about those times when being alone is an aversion to those that we love? What do you mean you need to be alone? What do you mean you need quiet time? What do you mean you need that? Aren't we enough? Aren't we enough? Isn't our time together enough? Well, it is enough to fit, you know, to fill in my quota of being together. <laughs> It does a nice job of filling the bucket that says, yes, I also need to have human contact. But there's another part of my soul that is calling me to quiet. I need to rejuvenate, regenerate. I need to refill the basket, as Del Marie often says. I've given away all that I can give, and now I need to replenish my own supply. So I'm going to go get quiet with my thoughts. And maybe I'm going to have a box of crayons or colored pencils or gel pens, or maybe I'm just going to have a journal, or maybe I'm not going to have any of those things except a hot cup of coffee and maybe some lit candles and some incense. I've got a wonderful blend, Celtic blend, burning this morning here in my sacred space on my ancestral altar. Ancestors come be with me in the silence. No need to speak, simply be with me today. As Amantha says, bones of my bones, blood of my blood, please be with me in the silence today. As I remember, as I reflect, as I let go, as I embrace, as I rejuvenate, replenish, Nourish my soul. Yes, Led Zeppelin for the one with Stairway to Heaven. When I look to the West, right, my soul is longing for leaving. One of my very favorite songs of all time, whether it's, I love the version too that Heart did. <laughs> that was pretty wonderful. I recently watched an interview, I believe it was Dan Rather. Sometimes I get mixed up with my hosts and uh, Robert Plant talking about Led Zeppelin. Oh, if you're wondering, yeah, Led Zeppelin 4, the cover of the Led Zeppelin 4 album has the hermit that I was talking about, picking up the sticks. So Jimmy, or not Jimmy Page, Robert Plant is talking to Dan Rather about Led Zeppelin. You know, back in the day, they may not have used the word mystic, but clearly what they were talking about, or excuse me, singing about is bards, really. They were being bards, <laughs> singing bards, talking about mystical things, mythical things, inspired things that the soul understands. You know, when spirit is speaking to us in the quiet, 
when we go within like the hermit, we light a candle. Oh, just as I'm talking about that, my imagination is showing me a one, you know, that painting, a, a magnificent painting of Mary Magdalene, and she's holding the skull. And, and next to the skull is the candle. So what is that skull representing? That skull represents wisdom. Represents wisdom, arcane teachings. The candle representing the spirit, the soul. Oh, there's so much contained within art and music, isn't there? The hermit going within into antiquity, the antiquity of our soul. But our soul speaks to us uh, in visions. And we may not understand every vision that our soul gives us in the quiet. And for some people, they find themselves medicating themselves or being medicated because of the conversation that our soul has with us when we are being quiet. That's a whole other show. Probably need to talk about that sometime. But for those of us searching for the quiet and sometimes having to explain our need for the quiet, some of us have a better connection to our soul than others, and that's okay. Some of us, I don't think, have ever had the opportunity to really experience being quiet with our soul because we've been so doggone busy. Being a hermit doesn't mean that we have to, you know go on silent retreat. I have done that. I went to a wonderful monastery uh, over in Jackson, Michigan, a Romanian Orthodox monastery full of magnificent uh, Romanian sisters. I don't know if it's still open anymore over there, but I did a silent retreat weekend and it was amazing the conversations I was able to have with nature, to have with my soul, with my memories. You know, sometimes we need a little bit of quiet just to dig into a memory that we need to dig into when we're alone and by ourselves. And sometimes those memories, when they're left unattended to, can become inner demons, beasts, right, that we continue to feed over time until we take the time to really visit a memory, a situation, a relationship that perhaps has come full season, full circle, And when we take a look at those memories, all of a sudden they're not nearly as scary as we, as we thought they were because we'd been building upon the fact that we really didn't want to take a look at them for maybe months or, or years or decades. Going into the silence can sometimes mean, right, these days we say unhooking ourselves about a month ago i decided that i was going to remove the facebook app from my smartphone because i was literally being inundated with people's instant messages at 1 a.m 2 a.m 3 a.m while they were having alone time at all hours of the late evening, and I was trying to sleep, their inspired, <laughs> their times of inspiration were coming actually at me as they felt they needed to reach out to me in their quiet time. And I decided to myself I was going to unplug from that, and I did. And at first it was a little interesting, not having the capability of, of you know, being readily available via Facebook or having Facebook via my smartphone readily available to me. And that was one of those hermetic moves that I made. And I plan to keep it that way. One of the promises that I've made to myself going into the silence of winter is to have more alone time quiet time and to choose purposefully when it is that I am, am wanting and needing to interact with people. And it's not to say that I won't see clients or do any of that sort of a thing, but the additional time with people. 
being social, socializing. We don't need to be on Instagram every moment or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. That is a choice. That is a choice that we make. When it begins to feel cumbersome and burden, uh, laden with burdens, then we need to take a look at unplugging from it, unplugging our children from it, our nieces, our nephews, our grandchildren. Allowing ourselves, gifting ourselves with quiet. Jeez, it wasn't that long ago, really, in the history of humanity that we followed the stars, the sun, and the moon, and it dictated, they dictated, when we woke up in the morning, when we had our midday meal, when we went to sleep at night, telling stories under the stars, gathering around those that were near and dear to us, at dinner time, at just before bedtime, has now become 24-7, plugged in, socially, and it wears on us, even if we don't necessarily identify it at first. Try unplugging from all of the widgets and apps for a while, and then you'll understand just how much it has affected your mental, emotional well-being. I decided instead that this winter, not only am I going to learn to play my jambe drum from Africa, better. I now have a violin. Thank you, Lily, for that gift of the violin. The other day I took the violin out of the case after it was gifted to me by by Lily, and I just sat silently for a moment. I've never had a professional violin uh, lesson. I tend to play my musical instruments, whether it's the drum or my ukulele or my harmonica. I play it from my soul not from sheet music. Um, And so I picked up the violin and I decided that I'm going to play it, as my dad would have said, like a git fiddle or a fiddle. And in the silence, I asked my ancestors to play through me. And Lily recorded it. I just let them come through. And I sent that little video audio clip over to Kelly and Kevin, who were absolutely stunned. Kevin said, what do you mean you've never had a lesson and you played it like that? I said, I just went into the quiet for a moment and asked my ancestors to play through me. See, you can do that with a box of crayons or you can pick up a fiddle. I call my violin a fiddle. You can pick it up. The silence inspires us, even without a formal music lesson. There I was, and maybe one day I will. So then Lily said, well, what can you do with your ukulele? And Todd had never heard me play that instrument, so I brought it down off my shelf. I have a brand new one. I just got it a couple of years ago out on the island. And as we talked, I played. I let spirit play through me. And yes, I did have formal lessons on my ukulele, actually, as a very young child on the island. It was part of our school curriculum. It's amazing what the silence contains. It contains the voices of our ancestors, the blood of our blood and the bone of our bones. It contains the voices of our angels, our allies, our guides, our very soul, the creator of all things, the ascended masters. It contains the wisdom of our experiences, the spheres, the sound of the stars, of the planets planets whirring and rushing together, creating amazing harmonics in the universe contains the wisdom of all time, of all of our time. And at this time of the year and heading into the winter, it bids us welcome. Each and every one of us has a bit of hermit inside that breathes a sigh of relief at this time of the year 
and after the eggnog in the family gatherings loves to retire to the quiet and that's okay in fact it is necessary it is necessary to nourish our beloved our soul and with that everyone thank you for being with me here today and uh, i urge you to take a moment of silence today and tomorrow and the next day Blessings be everyone. Get out there and shine your light as only you can shine it.